Welcome to the climb! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. What is leverage? It's a strategic advantage. It's the power to act effectively. It means that you're bringing something to the table that's tangible, that's real. It's not potential. It's cash flow. It's a cut. It's, a, it's, it's something that somebody can put their finger on and say, ah, you're for real. That's what's going to take to get the deal done and to get you moving forward in the new music business, whether you're a songwriter, whether you're an indie artist or a musician, uh, you've got to have a, a reputation. It's not just potential. And that's why we called this the climb, creating leverage in the music business. That was genius. That, that's, a, that's a backronym from uh, Mr. Brent Baxter, my good friend and co-host. Uh, Brent's an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Antebellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And he also helps songwriters like you turn pro by revealing how you write like a pro, do business like a pro. And then on a regular basis, he's getting you opportunities to create relationships and getting in front of real pro publishers and people that can can help your career. And you can find Brent very easily at songwritingpro.com. Once again, that's songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. Daredevil has created over 25 national TV opportunities for their indie artists by making them discoverable. Believe that. They've created multiple tour opportunities as well. And through the power of digital marketing data, they've attracted a number of investors for their artists. We're talking money people. And investors love digital marketing data because they know numbers don't lie because numbers don't talk. So you can find Johnny at daredevilproduction.com. That's production, singular, no S. And there is no S because there is no other Johnny D. What's up, brother? Man, you know, just hanging out the house here and got my hat turned backwards, ready to do some business. <laughs> you got your business face on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What was that movie with uh, Sylvester Stallone? Where he's I was like, just thinking about that over the top. Uh, uh, arm wrestling. Around it kind of <laughs> like flips the switch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so what are we going to learn today? <laughs> All right. Today, we're going to talk about why you need to stop calling your own songs great. Stop it. Stop it right now. Full stop. Do not pass go. Do not collect. Uh -oh. Stop calling your own stuff great. Well, before that, let's take care of some uh, business here. The Climb yep. Podcast is proud to partner with Disc Makers. These people over there are... Uh, They've been supporting indie musicians before indie music was even a thing. And when you're ready to make CDs, DVDs, vinyl, and, you know, not for nothing, we just got off a meeting with them on the regular. They're giving away free guitars, free studio gear, all kinds mm -hmm. of sweepstakes and stuff that you can use to, to get ahead. Uh, go and visit uh, discmakers.com, D-I-S-C makers.com. It's the only place you need to go. And while you're there, click on the Guides and Resources tab and download some of their excellent free guides. They've just revised and expanded their home studio handbook, which has a ton of great advice and information for newbies and studio veterans. And by the way, you can also get that on the same page where you can listen to the Climb podcast on their website. You can download the home studio handbook right there at the bottom of the page. You can find them online at www.discmakers.com. That's D-I-S-C makers.com or give them a call at 800-468-9353. That's 800-468-9353. Yeah. And so, hey guys, if you have not joined the climb community yet, please do so. Lots of people in there, musicians, songwriters, indie artists, asking questions about song, asking questions about marketing with tons of people coming in and answering those questions and giving real live, like, hey, I tried this and this worked and I tried that and that worked. And, and then Brent and I are getting in there too and leaving some, sometimes some pretty significant responses as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, join the client community. You got to ask to be let in. It's on Facebook. If, uh, but we let everybody in who asks. So just be right. good boys and girls or you'd be Roadhouse. Um, subscribe to the podcast. Make sure that uh, it comes, whether you're on Stitcher or iTunes or whatever, uh, system you're using, make sure that uh, all those episodes and the mini sods on Friday are downloaded automatically into your player and you can consume them in order and go back and revisit some stuff that you want to revisit. Take five seconds, leave a five star rating and review. That makes it look legit to other people who are uh, thinking about sticking their toe in the water and, and finding out about us and they want to know what's in it for them. And, and everybody does a real good job when they do leave a review of saying, Hey, this really helped me. This is how it helped me. 
And this is why you should listen to it too, which is very cool. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you're listening on Stitcher, we don't want to forget about you. We love you too. We hardly, <laughs> we're both on iTunes, so we don't go to the reviews there. We're going to start reading those, I think. But uh, we have two. We have two on there, and we love them both on Stitcher Reviews. Uh, so most of you listen on iTunes because we have uh, the vast majority there. But if you're on Stitcher, man, feel free to leave a comment there too. I don't know yeah. how you do it. I'm an iTunes guy, but we love you all too. And, we, and we'll catch up. We'll catch up on, the, on those reviews as well. But uh, finally, just um, tell somebody that's the best, that's the best form of, of getting this word out there and helping other people. Just let them know, hey, man, this really helped me. You should check it out. It's really cool. And share it on your social media. You can just share the stuff that you're finding from, from us on my feed or on Brent's feed or in the email and just put that link up there and let people know this is, this is how this helped you. And that's the, it's the best compliment you could give us. Mm-hmm. And speaking of which, we actually have a new review here on iTunes. This hey. is um, by, it's, the, the title is a five-star review. The title is, It's a Great Podcast by God Hates Red. Which is I figure there's a story behind that name. I don't know what it is, but... I really want to know now, right? <laughs> I know. Is God an anti-communist? Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or doesn't, doesn't like redheads, but he made, uh, he made a few of them. Doesn't like, doesn't like uh, Alabama? I don't know. Like, what's, I, I, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> if, like he, if he doesn't like Alabama, he should pick some time to do something about it other than just a national championship game. Uh, <laughs> he obviously right. likes the color red. He made so much of it. I don't know. There you go. So uh, the the review says, uh, this is a great podcast. I'd like to know what I can do to send my demos and see how this great show can help new artists that are trying to make new commercial music better. So I think the the way to really do that is to probably connect with you, Brent, through your Play for Publisher event, where they can yeah. send in a demo and, and maybe explain a little bit about that to, to God Hates Red. Yes. Um so, yeah, we can send demos to help uh, new artists. So if you're looking to connect with publishers, that's something that I do with songwritingpro.com. Uh, we have a Play for Publisher event going on. Right now we're collecting songs for that. It's going to be happening in March, but uh, we're collecting songs in, in this month in February. And we tend to do that quarterly. And there's some other events where I connect people to the music business, other publishers and, and other pros in the business. That might be a way. But as far as you know, getting your, your demo as an artist thing out there to the world, that's definitely a Johnny thing. And how to do that is something we often address on the podcast. So my response to that is keep on listening. Or if you want to get your music out there, get a consultation with Johnny. If you want to get into the music, you know, into like publishers and stuff, maybe you want to schedule one with me. (laughs) So there there you go. Yeah. So what, what are you telling me? My, my stop saying my songs aren't good. Like what? Here's the deal. You know, you don't get to decide if your songs are great and neither do I, to be fair, right? I don't get to decide if my songs are great. Uh, So we're going to talk about who does kind of get to decide if your song is great. So I I remember back when I was writing my early songs back in Arkansas and a good buddy of mine, still a good buddy of mine, Tim Meitzen. He was like my first co-writer and you know, and I, he and I would write something. I'd feel great about one of our songs, but I remember one time Tim saying, he was reluctant to call those songs great. I remember saying, man, I still, I'm just not comfortable calling my own stuff great. Now, in the excitement of creation, we probably said things like, man, this is great. You know, not, I'm willing to bet that I did on several occasions <laughs> and I was wrong, by the way, <laughs> but I didn't know that then. Uh, but when speaking about those songs outside the writing room or the writing hay bale or the writing campfire, as was often the case there, um, it was a different story with Tim. And I remember him saying, you know, like, I just have a hard time calling one of my own songs great. I'll say, I love it, but I don't think I can call it great. And so, you know, I took it as a healthy dose of humility and uncertainty on Tim's part. Um, After all, what qualified us to call our own songs great? I mean, at that point, we had accomplished absolutely zero other than like work tapes recorded around a campfire. You know, what gave us the right to proclaim greatness on our songs? Really, nothing did. Um, And looking at now, yeah, we don't get to decide if our own songs are great. We can decide if we love them, right? That's great. We're the only ones that can decide that. But really, only the market gets to decide if the songs are great. And so we're going to talk about that. Like, who gets to decide that, kind of what that means, and how we should respond to that. I like this. Okay. Okay. Yes. It's a little Gary V. Yeah. A little bit, without all the cussing, for me anyway. You can, <laughs> you can hold up that end of it, Johnny. I, 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 uh, I, it's really 
a thought process. I, I, it takes a lot of my energy not to cuss. <laughs> <laughs> been on this podcast, it's like a, the governor on a I'm race exhausted car. at the end of it from just from not cussing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's so awesome. tired. <laughs> I'm Cat so bleeping, bleeping tired. Like, <laughs> yeah, was it uh, Stephen Tyler says st- tap dancing on a landmine? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so if the market, which is you know the listeners, right, the listeners of the music business, if they decide your music is great then it is. I mean, because greatness is really, what does that mean, right? How do you define greatness? Yeah. We all have kind of our own definition of greatness is, and we hear some new jam, we're like, that's great. And then a month later, we're like, I'm over it. It's not great (laughs) or whatever. But, you know, if the market decides your music is great, then it is, right? Who can argue otherwise? If the market decides that your music is forgettable, then guess what? It is forgettable. If the market, if the listeners decide that your current album is not worth their time, they're right. But if they decide the same album is like rediscovered 10 years from now and the market decides that it's a lost gem that's brilliant and it blows up, they're right then too. That's right. The market is always right yeah. when it comes to deciding that stuff. And you know, there's probably some people wanting to put their boot through the speaker right now, but we still love you. Hang in with us. All right. Because again, it's, Greatness is kind of arbitrary, right? There are certain things you can look at technically, decide whether or not something's quality or not. But greatness, you know, you get those, uh, you know, you'd see those. I remember watching CMT or VH1 and be like the 50 greatest country artist. Yeah. And really, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of clickbaity, right? right. <laughs> For TV. Totally <laughs> like what's great? Yeah. Who decides, you know, is Hank Williams greater than Johnny Cash and, or Garth Brooks? How do you, what, you know, it's all kind of arbitrary. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, you know, it's, it's a qualitative, it's a qualitative decision. It's subjective. It's a matter of opinion and taste, right? Music isn't math. Right. Two plus two equals four, no matter what the majority decides in math, two That's plus right. two will equal four. Unless you're in a totalitarian dictatorship in which they say, okay, say, say two plus two equals five. And you just go along with it. Cause you got a gun to your head. <laughs> two plus two equals four. Even if people lie about it, right? Music is not like that. Now, you may be able to point out, like, objectively how your song has a more sophisticated structure, melodically, a more sophisticated rhyme scheme or melody than the the quote-unquote cliche and stupid hit songs on the radio. But at the end of the day, you haven't proven your song is great. you just proven that technically it's more sophisticated. But that's a different argument, right? Don't confuse that with greatness. Um, Now, you know, as far as you calling your own stuff great, I personally don't care if you call your own music great or not. That being said, in certain situations, in certain settings, that'll probably make you look like an egotistical, self-unaware amateur, mm-hmm. you know, to come out there like, man, this, this jam's going to change the world. It's awesome. It's great. The first thing I usually think of is, no, if that's <laughs> coming from the artist or the writer, I'm thinking, yeah. no, it's probably not. Probably means the opposite. Probably means you're not ready. You're not self-aware and you, you haven't had the humility kicked into you yet. So you're probably not ready yet. So yeah, the a lot of, time, of the market, just the whole going to change the world thing requires 10 more planets to line, align. Yeah. That outside the great song, it could be the greatest song in the world, but mm-hmm. if you're unaware that the other planets have to align, then that right there says you're unaware. You're unaware. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I'll, 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 I'll give you a quick example. Like mm-hmm. there's an artist that, that we used to work with. I'm not going to mention a name because this isn't a very flattering story but it's crs week this week there's uh, that's country radio seminar for those of you who aren't familiar with it so every program director from every radio station is in town in the same hotel for three days right Mm -hmm. what an opportunity these are the gatekeepers these are the guys that get you on the playlist or pull you off of the playlist and everybody from garth brooks who's done two shows now one at the bridgestone and you know that's a private kind of Mm -hmm. thing at the Bridgestone, okay? And (laughs) one smaller kind of show to all the way down to our clientele, the 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 artists who are really talented, trying to get something going and trying Mm -hmm. to get in there, getting access to these and creating relationships because again, it's relationships. Yeah. But uh, some stories going around, multiple program directors talking about this one artist and the team around the artist talking about uh, recording songs and trying to put them out there and get a number one, like on secondary radio. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like... You, if you, it's it make everybody just shaking their head. Okay, they're unaware. But, you know, you're not going to get a number one on secondary radio as an independent artist. You're not going to get the highest you could probably get would be like 16. Yeah, you, know? you can get like a number one on like the music row chart 
on secondary yeah. radio probably, right? Because right? yeah. it monitors a lot of secondary, but you're not going to get like a billboard or a... No, 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 you're not even on the Music Row chart. Like, I, okay. it, it, that would be very, very... I mean, you're on uh, Music Row, which this is what I'm talking about, which you monitor secondary radio. So secondary radio is not primary radio. It's not right. Nashville. It's like Bowling Green. It's a smaller market. Mm -hmm. And they often play a lot of independent artists because... They, uh, Bowling Green can still hear some Nashville radio, mm -hmm. right? They have to create a different, something different to listen to in the market. If they're doing the same thing in Nashville, then everybody's just going to listen to Nashville because it's the right. station, right? So, so they're differentiating themselves with their product and what they offer mm -hmm. in the market. But you're not really going to get above like a 16 for that. It's a topic of conversation because everybody's like, this artist is very talented, mm -hmm. okay? And, but they don't get it, right? Yeah. They don't have works. They're, they're not not even interested in finding out about it. It's just all ego. Like we just gotta get that number one. It's like, man, there's plenty of people in town that are gonna tell you for this <laughs> amount of money. <laughs> yeah. I can help you do it. You know? It's that awareness thing. It's it's yeah. it's real. And and you gotta you gotta know how it really works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it can make you definitely look like an egotistical amateur that you're not self-aware by by talking like that, overhyping your stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're not going to buy the hype if it's coming from you. Now, if, you know, if your fans are saying that, that's awesome. <laughs> if somebody else can say you're great all day long, and that's great. You saying it yourself is, is, is not so awesome. But you know, th that's not really even the biggest problem, right? Coming off like an amateur, it's not great. But it's, I don't think it's the biggest problem. I think for, for many of you out there, the biggest problem is that you're too busy blaming the market for being stupid and wrong. Yeah. And you should be focused on writing better songs and recording better songs and, and putting out a better product, right? Yep. And the market is not wrong. Even when they're wrong, they're not wrong. It's kind of the customer is always right. I don't want a blue yep. car. Well, you're dumb. You should want a blue car. No, I don't want a blue car. This blue car, blue is great. Not for me. <laughs> yep. You know, it's, it's that a, kind of argument. Can you imagine a, a car salesman trying to argue that with a customer? Trying yeah. to get them into a different color car. Can you imagine being a customer with a car salesman going, this is the car I want, but I want it in black. Well, this is blue. Let's, do you want blue? No, no, I don't. No, like, I, don't. I, want, I want a black car. A lot of people probably had that experience in one way or another, and it pisses you off. Yeah, don't tell me what. Yeah, I'm dumb for wanting what I want. Yeah. And that's kind of so, what you're doing, and you're blaming the market. And if you're, you know, the, the car salesman, again, okay, we go back to the selling steak in a vegan community or hamburgers in a vegan community. Right. The vegan community is not wrong for not wanting to buy your hamburgers. They just have their own choices and their yeah. own priorities, their own values, their own whatever. And hey, no judgment here, right? They got their own thing going on. But if you're calling them wrong and stupid and just going, well, if I make not even making better hamburgers, but just these hamburgers are great. No, not according to the people, but who not cares? According to the market. Yeah. <laughs> Irrelevant. So if, if people don't get your songs, it, it means one of, one of two things here. One, that your music is not for that audience and you need to find the audience that will love it. So you need to take your hamburger stand and get the heck out of the vegan community, wish them well, kick the dust off your boots on the way out and go set up shop in, you know, where they like meat, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, so that's one thing, or and that could be with your, your songwriting, maybe it's a different genre that you really need to be writing for. Maybe it's just a different set of co-writers. Maybe it's a different set of publishers that are more into what you do, right? Um, if I go out to LA and I'm playing my songs for a bunch of pop people, they're, if they're not country fans, they're just not going to get it. Yeah, it's going to be blinking at you like Ren and Stimpy, like boing, like, boing, Wow, boing, what is boing. that? <laughs> oh, you're, I'm sorry. Steak, vegan. Sorry. Let me go, you know, down the road. Right. Or same thing if you're showing up with a salad, but you know, people are going to go eat a greasy cheeseburger that sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not the salad's fault. And so one, it means, okay, so your music just isn't for that audience and you need to find the right audience or two, you're in front of the right audience, but your music just isn't that good yet. And you need to keep working on your craft. Mm -hmm. So, if, you know, if you're, a songwriter, which is you know mainly what I'm I'm looking through the lens of, and your songs just aren't getting reception when you go out and play out, or if you get some publisher meetings, you send songs in for review, critique, that kind of stuff. Well, okay, it could mean just you just haven't found your champion yet, the person that gets it. I mean, we talk about 
uh, I think on the last episode, Casey Musgraves winning the Grammy for album of the year. Mm-hmm. Apparently Grammy voters are her people. Yeah. You know, that kind of mentality and taste and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Apparently vibes on what she does. Right. They yep. like it. Country radio programmers. I'm not going to say the fans, but the programmers apparently aren't her people as much because they're not programming her stuff on country radio. Um, is she great? Is she not great? Well, one group says she's great. The other group says it's not for them. I guess they're both right, I guess. <laughs> but the fans are buying the record, and, and she's having a career, and she's doing well. You know, it just like yep. she's finding her people. She's finding her lane. She's finding her people. Oh, my people are Grammy voters and people that like this type of music. And it may not be this other type of music. Same thing with, you know, you put Garth Brooks in a certain, you know, audience and they're just not going to get it. Yeah. And, and to listen, two things can be true at the same time. I yes. really feel like I can't say that enough in today's political environment because everything's being served up. It doesn't matter what you believe or what you don't believe. It's being served up as black or white. Right. If you don't like this, then you're this, right? The prisoner of two ideas. You can have three or four ideas. It's not. Exactly. And there's mm-hmm. all kinds of gray area and there's all kinds of in between. Casey Musgraves, that record is fantastic, but I, I, I can see, frankly, why she's probably not getting spun that much on the radio. There's nothing that's like really upbeat on it. That's mm-hmm. like 120 beats per minute, which is what radio is trying to do. Why are they trying to do that? Ship is sinking. You know, and they're they're just they're scrambling, and they, they, that that might have been one of the biggest radio records twenty five years ago, but mm. now it's not. But did she let that bother her? Yeah, no, no. Just, <laughs> still won a Grammy. She took her salads <laughs> and got out of the meat eaters, you yep. know, neighborhood and went over to where they, you know, and she people are buying her salads. That's right, and yeah, because it sticks out like a sore thumb on radio in a way that they think will not be positive for them. Right. They, they're in the business of solving their own problems, not on solving Casey Musgraves. And mm-hmm. so they want people listening. And, you know, if you're in the middle of Florida, Georgia line and Kane Brown and, you know, all that Luke Combs, then all of a sudden you hit slow burn. It's like, Arr! you know, hitting, hitting the brakes <laughs> right. on that. Um, right. Some people would find it a blessed oasis in a desert of other stuff. Other That's people right. are just switch the next country station in town or whatever. Yeah. And so that's, you know, but is it great? Is it not great? How do you define that? Right. Yeah. Now, if she were to come out and just go like, my music's great as an unknown, you're just like, oh, whatever. Is she right. great? Well, she won a Grammy. Is yeah. she great? Well, she can't get a hit. Yeah. Besides that. Right. That, 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 that she sings. She's got a couple that she wrote. <laughs> She's got a couple she wrote for sure. And mama's broken heart and some other mm-hmm. stuff. So, um, so as, as a writer, let's say you love country music, but you hate today's country music. That's fine. I can respect that opinion. But if you want to write hits, what are you supposed to do? Calling the market stupid does you no good. Oh, country fans are stupid. The radio's stupid. The industry's stupid. They keep putting out today's country music or whatever. These artists that I don't like because they need to go back and just keep playing George Strait and Alan Jackson, which, yeah. you know, I love that stuff. <laughs> but... If you love that stuff and you hate today's music, but you want to write a hit, man, you need to study today's country music. Stop mm-hmm. calling the market wrong. Say, my stuff's great. This stuff sucks. No, man. It's just the market. So what is what is it the market likes about that music? What makes it relevant? Can, can, can I get in there for a second? Yeah. If you are – just think about any job that you have. If, if any of you guys have like side jobs – or you've had side jobs in the past. Imagine being a construction worker. And when you're a construction worker, what's already done? The blueprint's already there. And you got to build yes. this edifice from this blueprint. And you're like, now nah, this is stupid. We're going to move this thing over here. <laughs> right. How's that going to work for you? Are you going to have that job for too long? No. no. You know, if you're at McDonald's, okay, when you had your first job and somebody comes in and says, I would like a Big Mac and a large fry and a large Coke. And you're like, okay, that's stupid. You should get the quarter pounder. Are you right. going to keep that job? Well, to me, a Big Mac is a quarter pounder patty with. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, like, just no, shut up and give them the decide. damn Big Mac. Like, that's what they want. If you want to work at McDonald's, you got to give them what they're ordering. Right. 
If you want to work in construction and keep your job, you've got to know how to build that building like the blueprint says. Mm -hmm. This isn't the place for your, you know, you want an opinion on structure? Go be an architect. Yeah. Right. You're in the wrong gig. So if, you know, if you, if you want to push something that I, cause I see this all the time, Brent, mm-hmm. from writers, right. And they, they are not aware of who they are. If you want to do something like Florida, Florida Georgia line did and push, you don't have to like Florida Georgia line, but you have to appreciate the fact that when they came out, everybody said no, because it was different. It wasn't mm-hmm. what was happening. It was totally different, but they were the artist and yeah. they get to make, Go find that audience and make people believers. But if you are a writer with no intention of being an artist and you're like, I, we need to change the world with this song and I'm doing stuff that's totally different, right off the bat, you're, you've got to either find the artist that wants to do that mm. or cater to the market because, it, you, it, again, you know, stake in a vegan community. Like you, you're, you're in the service business now. You don't get to change a bunch of minds. Right. right. Yeah. It's, that's a hard thing. Cause on one hand you kind of do what you do and you hope the spotlight swings over to your stack of stuff that the market kind of catches up in you know, the, when it's winding and stuff, it, it intersects with what you do and there's value to that. Right. Cause you know, we have to be careful with our McDonald's analogy because that is so, you know, so structured, no, you know, latitude there. Everything right. is, it's a start not in a full example. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't want to say you need to paint by numbers on your art because it is art, but there is a, a big Mac is a big Mac and there's certain things they expect from a McDonald's, right? Yeah. You want to be able to go anywhere in the world, go to McDonald's, know what to expect. I went to, I mean, it's funny. We were in, uh, when we were in Guangzhou, China, uh, adopting both times, adopting our kids. We went through Guangzhou and we were there for about a week and right over by the hotel where we stayed, there's a McDonald's. Now, Emily and I never go to McDonald's in the U.S., right? But, and we were laughing. We were, we were there with some, some other people from the States, and they never go to McDonald's either. And, uh, but, oh, yeah, that McDonald's was awesome. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you oh, I just got to get some McDonald's because I need to taste the home. I know what to expect. I go in there. It may be a little harder ordering, but my fries taste like McDonald's French fries. My burger tastes like a McDonald's burger. And okay. just knowing what to expect right? in, in the middle of China. You got to know what to expect. So that comes with the territory. But what I'm really saying is don't hate, investigate, find out what, what people are responding to in whatever market you're trying to get into. Now, if you don't want to be a part of that market, that's fine. That's, that's cool. You do you, right? But if you want to get in there, you need to investigate it, not just hate on it go, okay, what's working? How can I figure out why it's working? And once you start to understand that, you can incorporate some of those elements into your own songs, making them more relevant or, as a term I use a lot, market smart. Or you can choose to stay inside your current musical box in the hope that the market eventually changes its mind about your music, and and that's good. Some writers stick to their creative guns, and sometimes the market eventually decides to like it. Sometimes it doesn't, right? Either choice you make is fine as long as you understand the implications, but yeah, you what, what to, horse you're riding. You got to know exactly. what horse you're riding. Yeah. But it's a waste of time to blame the market for being stupid. No, yeah. the market isn't stupid. The market's always right because it's just opinion. So yep. its opinion is always right. Yep. And if they change that opinion, it'll be right again. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's right. And, and so I think it's smart to, to study. And if you do have a, a definitely a lot of flavor into what you do um, that's different, but it's – but it's great. It's compelling. Let's use that word. It's compelling. Uh, and people dig it, but it's not what, you know, And you can say competitive, on. too. That would be a good word. Like it, it, a competitive, it be yeah. Song, but it, you were writing competitive songs that one day, and the guy's like, these are, these are hits. Yeah, in 1990. Yeah, exactly, like, oh. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's take what I do and intersect it with the way stuff is being presented today. And, you know, Got some good results from that. By the way, Thanks. awesome creative exercise, right? Pushing a little bit out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. and saying, okay, I'm just going to play with this over here. Maybe I'm not going to like it. Mm-hmm. But you go and you try to do it and, and you give it 150%. And then yeah. you go back and you listen to three or four songs that you've written with that very specific intention entwined in those songs. And then you say, you know what? This isn't me. I don't want to do this. Or like, wow, this is kind of fun. 
this is kind of cool, but it's not okay to point a finger at it from across the fence when mm-hmm. you've never done it. Yeah. And what I tell people a lot of times when I'm, when I'm coaching with them is like, okay, you know, they do this thing. Usually it's, it's a little, it's a lane or two over from what is happening. Right. Just like, okay, let's find where what you do intersects with the commercial marketplace. So maybe you are more of a traditionalist, you mm-hmm. know, country traditionalist. Okay. Where can that intersect with the market? Cause you need to find an entry point, right? Yeah. If you're just writing stuff that sounds like 1945 or 1985 or 1995, okay, who's closest to that that's mm-hmm. getting, that's relevant as far as, you know, the publishers are going to care about, the executives are going to care about that kind of stuff, right? For the relevant for, for the purposes of getting a hit. Oh, maybe it's uh, Luke Combs or maybe it's, uh, you know, George Strait still having a record or whatever it is. Okay. Now that's kind of your closest entry point. <laughs> now, how can we bridge the gap? So it's more of, I'm not telling you to go write a Kane Brown song or a Florida Georgia Line song if you're a traditionalist. That's just going to, no. <laughs> you're gonna, not gonna work something's going to snap. I felt something burst inside me. No, yeah. it's, uh, you know, you want to find that closest entry point, that closest point of intersection between what you naturally do and love and the commercial marketplace. And you study that and go, oh, okay, well, this is, okay, I can see some stuff here in this, you know, Dirk's Bentley stuff that kind of resonates with me. So maybe that's kind of where I can try to incorporate some of the other stuff that he, you know, and try to mold those things together. It's an intentional process and you, you play with it and you try and you, you just like me, it's some of the stuff that my lyrical sensibilities and stuff going, okay, where does it intersect with the commercial marketplace? Well, if I present it this way or I find these kind of melodic co-writers, you know, I'm somewhat agnostic about, melodies and style right because I, I like a lot so right. but i definitely have a, what i like lyrically and what works for me where i bring my highest point of contribution and so i may be like this is more of a traditional idea but i'm going to wrap it and present the lyric in a way that's more current and i'm going to find the co-writer that can bring that sonic quality to it that's much more relevant and therefore do what i do and connect it with the commercial marketplace i'm not just going to write songs like 1995 and call the market stupid why aren't they cutting my stuff yeah <clears throat> you know that's a, that's a victim mentality and it strips you of your power mm-hmm. and you're not getting better and at the same time i'm not saying just go to mcdonald's and make burgers exactly like everyone else is making them like it's a you know a factory right it's not but you do need to investigate and go what, what are people buying Mm-hmm. How do I incorporate some of that stuff to make my stuff a little more, you know, maybe I got a different engine under the hood, but it's a blue car and people really like blue cars. So maybe I can, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, you know, I think one of the coolest things you just said was you go out and let's say, okay, let's, I'm hoping that if you're fancy yourself a songwriter that you've, you've attempted to do some co-writes, like whatever town yeah. you're in, right? With some mm-hmm. other people, right? Not always the case. I mean, I, I see that a lot with different artists that I work with. They're very self-contained and it's very mm-hmm. scary to get out there, but but I encourage them to get out there and just imagine what you're going to learn. It doesn't have to be for you, you know? Yeah. It doesn't have to be your song, like right. that, but, but you're going to learn something and you might find another angle that, that for your own writing. It's going to give you some breath, some, some more knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. So if you know that, okay, I always write like 1985 country. That's where I go. So if I purposely put myself with a writer who always writes like Cam Brown, right? Because mm-hmm. you know those people out there. Then what happens when we that when we have a baby? <laughs> right. You know what what happens there? And that could be interesting, right? And you could mm-hmm. find some just sort of different things that you initially thought would be horrific and um, absolutely blasphemous to your art, but you might just be like this is kind of like, you might like it, right? Like, yeah. okay, I'm not, this isn't like a Cam Brown song or a, a Sam Hunt song. So I'm not like completely going over here, but I, this has got a new twist on something that I really like. And it's still got a big thread of what I really like in there, which all of a sudden now could become a new, fresh, old look at something that makes sense to an, to an artist or a bunch of artists. Exactly. Know? Yeah. Don't hate, investigate. Yeah. And, and also, you know, again, it's, it's for, is it great? And go get some outside opinions. May, you know, maybe you're sitting in your garage and you think it's great, but no one's really heard it yet. And so maybe they would agree. Maybe they wouldn't. Maybe they'd have some suggestions. 
You need to get out of the basement. Let's well, that's start, the, that's let's the other thing. Stuff. You know, that's the first thing that went through my head was you don't get to point the finger at the game and the people on the court from the cheap seats, man. If you're, All right. you know, you got to get in the game. Like if you have a million reasons why you can't ever get a demo done of your song and you just have a problem getting cuts, well, step one is you don't have a calling card. You don't have a proper sort of thing that you need to really get some kind of demo done, even if it's mm-hmm. like a really nice acoustic vocal or if it's a full band demo right. or something. Or if you're an artist, if you don't if you don't have music out there, if nobody's heard of it, if you're not marketing and putting it out there, then nobody knows about it. It, it could be the greatest song. It's true for Guns N' Roses. Mm-hmm. Arguably the greatest debut record, not arguably, the, like sales-wise, the greatest debut record of any artist in the history of the music industry. But for the first year, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because nobody knew about it, right? Yeah. So you gotta you gotta get some skin in the game. You gotta take some hits. You gotta be vulnerable mm-hmm. to get out there, and then you can start talking to me about how you feel about the industry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you know, as we're winding this down, you know, we don't want to just point out uh, pain. We want to try and prescribe some painkillers. So if you're ready for someone else to listen to your stuff and decide it's great or it ain't for them or whatever, then I got an opportunity for you. This falls under the, you know, connect you with the pros. Uh, We have a play for publisher event coming up. We try to do these about every quarter and it's that time again. So if you're listening in the future, if you know, if you're listening in the past, I'm not sure how that's, but if, anyway, if you listen to the future, <laughs> then, well, I just thought about that for a second. And I feel whoa. like dude, dog was spelled C A T. I feel exactly. like we're baked right now. And we're talking, we're trying to, like, <laughs> dude, we're not, but Oops, that was where that conversation the past before we even recorded it. <laughs> it <was>. um, <sighs> anyway, if you listen to this future, this, we probably have another one coming up, but what we got going on in March, it's uh, Scott shared of rare spark media. So he produces, or he's publishes Walker Hayes. Who's had some, you know, he's a, he's a climbing artist. Like you broke up with me and Craig at nineties country and uh, Victoria banks and uh, you know, some other writers. So he's legit. He was my first player at major Bob. He's helped get cuts by rascal flats and Kenny Chesney and you know, just a few, people yeah. george dre a couple, and, couple just garth couple brooks one two people might have you know, whatever you might have yeah. heard of yeah yeah so if you're into that um and he's also had stuff happen in the sync world so he's, he's a good dude good song plugger good publisher and so he's gonna come in and what we're gonna do is you know we have a process set up you can send in a song to me and i get it down to the 10 i think are the most relevant for him again it's my opinion but hey what i think is gonna catch his ear in a good way and we're gonna hop on a video call uh the top 10 writers and Scott, myself, and he's going to listen to the songs and give feedback. And because it's a video conference, you get to go back and forth and go, hey, what? okay, this didn't make sense to me about what blah, blah, blah. Or what do you think about this? Or I do have a question. And you get to have some interaction with a real deal publisher. We've had people join from all over the world. We've had Sam from Scotland. We've had uh, Chelsea from so Utah. We've had people from yep. Canada in and, and other people that are just, you know, across town, you know, 10 minutes from Music Row join us on the, on the video call. And it's a door opener. It's a chance to get in with a, uh, a real publisher and uh, just have an introduction. And, and you come in recommended and they're going to listen to the song and you know, cause you're watching them listen to it, which is really cool. And another thing is, yeah, only the top 10 are in that, in that meeting live, but I record it. And everyone that purchases a song submission spot, whether they send in a song or not, will have access to the video replay. But some those, people just buy the spot to have some access do. to that. Yeah, replay. Like, I, I'm not, my but songs aren't ready. I don't want to send anything in, but I, I want to see what happens. Cool. Yeah. All right. We'll see how it goes. Be a, you get to be a fly on the wall. Exactly. In a publisher meeting. Yeah. And, or like, ah, I'm kind of wondering, but that's scary. What, what is that like? Well, here, check this out and you'll be able to get a good flavor for what it's like and take some of that mystery out of it. Like, oh, oh okay. And so that's yeah. really right. It's like 10 bucks. Right. So even if you don't send in a song, it's great if you do. People have gotten meetings out of it, you know, follow ups and that kind of stuff and and good information. And there's great information in this. Not only do you hear the songs that made it, so you get an idea of more where the bar is, what the competition is doing. You get to hear the publisher's reaction to it, which may not be what you expect. And then just they're just dropping value bombs like crazy about what's working, what's not working, what they get too much of, what they're okay if they never hear again, or what they want more of, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. What their writers are doing, so valuable. So to get all the details on that, just go to giftfrombrent.com. 
And not only can you download my free, my free ebook, Think Like a Pro Songwriter, it also puts you on the Songwriting Pro uh, Insiders list. And that way you get the information on this event and any others that we're doing in the future. So that link is always relevant. Gift from Brent.com so you can get all the details. You can send your song in and, and hopefully, you know, get a good introduction to a legit music publisher. And That's then, right. you know, and don't start off by going, this song's great. <laughs> Tell me what you think. Because yeah, right off the bat, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going to disagree. Right. You're not, yeah, you're not going to be interested in what I got to think. Exactly. I, got to think. Oh, I agree that it's great. <laughs> exactly. Yep. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, um, that's killer, man. What a, I mean, 10 bucks for that education. Are you kidding me? Like what? Yeah, like, it's like an hour and a half meeting. It's yeah. 10 bucks for an hour and a half, like awesome feedback and interaction stuff that you could probably revisit like a lot. And yeah, just go there's back a lot of good and, stuff in there and, 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 and get some, some really good data on how to, what, what's going on in the marketplace and what uh-huh. you can do to, to fit into it. So yep. um, guys, that brings us to the end of another killer climb episode. If you haven't done so already, join the climb community, uh, ask to be let in. We let everybody in subscribe to the podcast every single episode full episode on Tuesday and the mini-sodes on Friday come right into your player there and you can line them up and listen to them when you have like terrible insomnia like I do. That's what I do with some podcasts. Huh. Take a second to 30 seconds, leave a five-star rating and review. Tell the people why you like this, why this is working for you. And then finally, the best compliment you could give us would be to share it, to put it up on your social media, to tell a friend, tell another musician, tell another songwriter, hey, this is this good stuff in here. You got to check this out. I think it's it's you're gonna love it by far the best you could give to us right yeah man get the word out there dogs and um whiskey that's right listen this podcast exists because we want you to win guys so keep on climbing and we'll see you at the top 